everybody. Welcome to Friday. Glad you could join us. Uh, yesterday, we looked at Jason Yo's colors. Jason Yo is with us in the studio today. Um, Jason is a brand ambassador from Malaysia. He's a phenomenal artist. Hopefully, we're able to look at his website, look at some of his artwork. Um, Jason said he will take um, questions while he paints. So if you're on Zoom, you can ask uh, Jason uh, questions directly. Um, if you're on Facebook, then Anna, Gabriel, Johnny, Giovanni, myself, Ethel will, will uh, bring your questions over to Jason. So with that, Jason, thank you so very much for joining us. It's one o'clock in the morning or one thirty in the morning for Jason. So yeah, in simply mode. Jason, your camera is still all um off there. Thank you. So Jason put together a, um, a series of uh, uh, photos and images that he'll be showing. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so Jason, anytime you want to, Jason, hello, Jason. Hi. Hi, Jason. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Happy to have you here. And thank you, John and Katharine, for inviting me. Thank you so much for accepting. Yeah, love to have you. So Jason's a world traveler. If there's a place in the world, you say, have you been there? He's been there. So uh, with that, Jason, can you show us your your, um, your slideshow? Yeah. OK. Sure. All right, I'm going to enable now. OK, go ahead, Jason. Yeah. So can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. OK. <clears throat> this is the first mate I met Catherine and John in Sunchen Binale in 2015. Was it in China? Yeah, in China. Yeah, where, where you and me met as well. <laughs> uh, the, the exhibition opening, actually. Hi, everybody. Uh, Hi, Angela. Hi. Hello. Hi, Jason. Hi. Okay, Hi. this is Hi. my Hi. tour. Hi. The photo I do in my in my trip. So just let me do a small briefing about myself. I'm Jason Yo from Malaysia. Actually, I, I, I like to travel and collect a creative inspiration from my travels. Actually, my, <clears throat> I've been I've been interested in art since very young age. But I never been any, I never been to any art school. I went on my way. And then slowly, and then pick out and slowly master the skill along the way. Actually, in the beginning of my artistic journey, I used to be painting and drawing in more realistic way. But since then, I feel that I feel I got bored to repeat the same things. And then I find a way and try to challenge my job myself to break through of the repetitive comfort zone, through endless trials and, and error, experimenting and researching. I'm glad to be able to present my artwork, my latest artwork of the beauty of semi-abstract. So this is a very simple introduce about myself. Okay, so before I start the real painting, um, especially the big picture, I will do I will do some small thumbnail sketch and try to learn pre visualize uh, my finished painting. So during the competition process, I just only do during my composition process. I'm I like to use a simplified way to design the composition and mainly focus on the shape. So from the slide show, you can see the red boat here. Okay. Actually, this is the, the composition design of this one. And then the complete picture is, is below here, down there. Okay. So I just collect some info from the reference photo. Not follow everything that I, I see from the photo. Because painting is not, nobody asks us to copy everything. Maybe only to explore uh, our feeling, to express our feeling, and then to to say what we want to say to our audience. That is quite important. Okay, so that you can see in my composition design, only left a few lines, a simple line to outline the basic shape of the object. 
this is the composition that I study. I, I, I plan for my painting, especially the big size of the painting, uh, complicated painting. Only I do the small sketch, thumbnail sketches, study, and then <clears throat> portrait or landscape. Sometimes we can change the formatting. If the photo reference for what that's not so perfect for doing painting, for making painting, and then you maybe you can make any changes according to your need in order to create more beautiful or more better composition is quite important. So from this picture, the, actually this picture I, I took in Yangon, Myanmar, where I visit there. Okay, so this is the uh, landscape, uh, uh, horizontal to vertical format. This is one of my favorite, favorite uh, artworks. This is Rome city. A simple line to capture the, the, the certain point. Okay, sometimes I'm not finish the painting or I'm not making a painting for the whole scene. I just let a portion that affected me. Actually, before I start to paint, after I, I after drawing, uh, I always do some color planning, especially the combination of the color that I will I, I plan to use. So in this painting, I just collect some info, especially on the, the atmosphere of the picture, and then to choose the color. So this is a color what I use from my dot card. Mainly the, uh, the, main, the primary color is blue family, blue ultramarine blue or uh, cobalt blue or uh, silverine blue. Of course, the transparent red oxide and then maybe the related secondary color like orange, yellow. So mainly this painting in, is a um, cold series color, in cold series color and more abstract way to paint this one. So in my painting, sometimes I do it more um, as, as that like this painting is one of my favorite painting. Mainly I focus on the edges. Sometimes I use the hard edges to build up the, the, the form or the shape in the picture, especially at the main focus area, this area. Sorry. And then I use the overlapping method to increase the layering effect. I use the interweaving techniques to show the layering effect, to combine the different sizes of the spaces to make the picture looks more, more perfect or more better uh, in a abstract way. And then layering, and then color branding, and then spring, spraying some water to make some effects, and stretching. Uh, I think the quite interesting uh, the way I uh, the method I living white. Sometimes I don't like to use the masking fluid because I feel that it's not easy to use it fluently and naturally. So instead of use the the masking fluid, I prefer to use the scratching. I use the pen knife to scratch the very very tiny light color line. It's more suitable and more easier to get the result. So this is some techniques that I'm using to complete my picture to <clears throat> another my favorite. So in this area got very, very blur edge. A blur edge can <clears throat> a blur edge can join two intersecting surfaces and then created appear and disappearing effect to make the picture looks more dreamy and more chaotic. 
Sometimes when I create a painting, I will strengthen the toner value between the dark area and light area to increase or to create it, or to create the depth and the positive and negative space. The appropriate of use leaving white or reserve the white area in the composition doesn't mean that blank area is emptiness, is empty. For me, the blank area can create more imagination room for the audience. And then they will, maybe the audience will stay more longer at your painting and still thinking what happened to that area and didn't move to another painting just surrounding you. And sprinkling the water and work on the brush stroke will make the picture look more artistic. Okay. The differences in sizes of the space will create a very, very beautiful rhythm. This is a very small shape, and then this is a large shape. So different sizes of the shapes can make the picture look more rhythm, like uh, we seen. So now this is the photo reference. Actually, in my hometown, they've got a lot of this kind of boats, especially is the Malay fishing village. And then it's a simple, very, very simple painting, just a simple sketch. <clears throat> Normally in the first step, I, will, I like to use wet and wet method to paint the first wash. At the same time, during this stage, I leave some white spaces. And many focus, uh, many concentrate on the blending of the colors, make changes the density, hot color and cold color, light color or thin color, as well as contrast effect. For the second step, I mainly focus on the layering effect and build up the structure of the picture. This is the complete work. The last step, I'm adding some accessory like the lamp pole, the wooden pole, the coloring, the, the colorful flare, and some lining to increase the contents of the picture. So normally, if properly, I take up three to five steps to complete the picture to avoid overworking on the picture. Sorry. So I think um, it, the, uh, this is the Peter, this is the picture that I took during my trip to Santorini. I think it, uh, yeah, I believe that in the um, imagination is a very great skill. And then <clears throat> sometimes I complete the picture, not just only refer to the picture. To the photo reference, I do my own way. I do what I want to do. I, to me, the visual impression and memory are extremely important element to bridge me into the pen production or painting. Especially if you want to paint the abstract painting well, mm, but. A very good understanding on the subject and the object depicted is important. It's very important. So this painting I paint totally uh, based from my uh, expression in an inspiration when after after the trip. This is the photo reference. I combine the both both and then present the painting. Here is the building in semi-abstract way. So I'm very happy that my, my, my good friend Stella having a, a, good, a good lesson for my student in Malaysia. So the upcoming event is on 19 and also um, tomorrow. Tomorrow got another section of the uh, actually, I uh, this is the 
uh, oh, I organized the double shot international group online lesson to my specialty to my students. I invite some of my friends, the artist friends like Stella, MB Gurung, or the sketches, the famous sketcher uh, around the world to have it to have the lesson uh, just for uh, my student. So in to, uh, tomorrow is the part two um, lesson from Bato. Bato, are you there, Bato? Hi, Bato, nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, and then the upcoming one is uh, 19 June. So if you like, uh, if you interested with my artwork, you can log into my Facebook account, my my Instagram account, or Linktree, or Linktree will lead you to my social media. This is my <clears throat> uh, Facebook, and this is my Instagram. This is the Xiao Hong Shu. This one is the the name is Xiao Hong Shu, and then this is the WeChat. Both are the China uh, China social media platform. There are a lot of artists and artworks to be discovered there. So most of the Chinese Malaysian artists, I think, okay, uh, or Taiwan artists, they will put they keep posting the new update about their activity or artworks, there is a big market in China. So you can promote your art, you can you can know each other, the great artists are through this platform. And then you can see a lot of good pictures. Recently I'm into the legally I'm into NFT also. Okay. But my NFT is still not yet been launched. Stay tuned for the update, maybe very soon. This is my upcoming workshop. The topic is diluted. The comment on the fifth uh, of May, uh, four lessons, four lesson course. If you are interested, maybe you can touch me and contact me. And then this is my new, my class demonstration for my student a few days ago. They are all, they all are my, my students. Now they start to changing their colors to, from other brand to Daniel me. They get a good try and for the pigments. Now let's have fun with painting. Awesome. Beautiful presentation. Thank you, Jason. Wonderful, Jason. Thank you very oh, much. We love sometimes, the presentation. <laughs> some, thank you very much, Stella. Sometimes I use some extra tools like this feature, feature and then the credit card I cut into different sizes um, to make some special effect. Thank you for going through the problem solving and the analysis of the working through the steps and the layers and the critical analysis for the images that you that you go through. That's a very helpful. You have to give us a lesson on doing this, Jason. Amazing presentation. Thank you yeah. very much. Thanks, thanks, Jason. Great presentation. Yeah, terrific. <laughs> very quickly, I show you some materials that I'm teaching materials. And Jason and I are preparing a trip to Malaysia. Yeah. Wonderful. This is from photo reference, how I convert to picture and then through the simple sketch. Mostly I, I, I study, I do the thumbnail sketch and study the compositions. Maybe uh, oh, in the same picture, I will study. I, I will. I will. I will sketch uh, several sketches, and then choose the one that I satisfied. And um, maybe for if for the last painting, I will do further study uh, on on which I choose uh, the slide, the the sketch I choose. So this is the technique that I'm using. 
uh, to compose my picture, overlapping, additional. I, sometimes I can cut the shape, especially maybe I, be, I paint board, I paint the building. I, I'm, I'm not really to complete all the shape of the buildings of the boats. Uh, according to the need of the competition design to be better, to make the competition to be better, I maybe I cut some certain area of the shape of the of the boats of the buildings and then combine with other shape to make the rich rearing effect and then to let the, the spaces they are interweaving the <coughs> and then this is the way uh, the technique that I'm using and then this is also I just choose a small portion select a small portion to show my students how to use this method or this technique to compose a painting instead of you do you show them too many elements to create a painting I spray out all the elements one by one to uh, to explain well, to, to, to do the more further explain thank you Jason are you okay like um, in a little while, Jason would lead us. I will kind of do a demo. And are yeah, you okay to okay. answer questions, um, Jason, as you do the demo? In between demos, are you okay to answer questions? Uh, it's okay. Or we can have the questions later at the end. Yeah. Take it away, Jason. Yeah. So now I'm doing the I, I'm going to do the simple, very simple sketch. The paper size is uh, 38 by 26 cm. Power home paper rough surface. But what are we painting today, Jason? This is the photo reference. Yeah. Okay. For our guests in Zoom and in Facebook, for Zoom, you may type in your questions in the chat room and we'll help read them to Jason. And for our guests in Facebook, you can also do the same. You may type in your questions in the live chat. Hello, Jason. Yes. Um, yesterday, we were looking at your uh, dot card and there were one or two things that we were thinking of, such as uh, one of the questions that came up were, uh, why ultramarine blue and French ultramarine blue in your dot card? Can you repeat again the question? Why yes, ultramarine blue? And and French ultramarine. So I think John asked that question earlier. Why why you oh, the have differences the between the ultramarine blue and ultramarine? French ultramarine and ultramarine and normal ultramarine. You have okay. both. To me, to me, I, to me, I think ultramarine blue and ultramarine is quite similar color. So, but I feel that ultramarine blue is more brighter if compared with French ultramarine. But I prefer for both color. Sometimes if you, I, I, I don't have the one of the color, maybe I don't have uh, uh, ultramarine blue, I, I will use a uh, uh, friend ultramarine, a little bit darker than the, the ultramarine blue. Thank you. Welcome.
while we're on the drafting side of uh, the painting, have you studied long to get accuracy with your drawing? Uh, I try to capture only the outline of the of the boots, and then in very simple, very simple shape to finish uh, to complete the the drawing. Okay. This is my color plan. Only a few of the warm color and mostly it is cool color like ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, maybe Luna violet, raw umber, sepia, Luna black, and transparent red oxide. This is the primary color and all the secondary color closely related to the, uh, the primary colors. So normally before uh, after uh, uh, before I paint and go to the real painting, I will I will select the primary color uh, that are in that are needed first, and then choose the secondary color that are related. Sometimes I use the metal palettes uh, for supplement color, maybe a little bit red color. Uh, I'm going to use. And my favorite and my favorite palette is the ceramic palette. I got different sizes of the ceramic palettes. I I bought it from China. It's very it manages well uh, for mixing color, and the sizes of the the palette is also big. That which more suitable in diluting a large amount of color. So now. Jason, hi. Is that a plastic palette? That one no, with the big ceramic, the ceramic color. Ceramic, yeah. yeah okay. Ceramic and you got color. it in China. Okay. Yeah. Jason. It's quite cheap, uh, the, 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 the palettes. Yeah. Another another thing that we noticed when we were looking through your dot card, uh, what you've got a lot of oxide paints in your dot card. Is that something you like to work with? Yeah, I can show you. Actually, I like to I like the brown series, the, the, the brown series color. So I use the brown color to mix gray. I will show you the sample. Okay. This this is quite question, uh, Greville. See, this is from uh for this painting, okay. I use the I choose the ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and raw amber, superior and lunar black as my primary color. And then the related, the secondary color is a little bit warm color. And then how in this painting I will use a lot of gray color. So the brown series color is easier to mix, and then the mix uh, gray to for mixing gray. I think the brown series color is more suitable. Instead, you can, you can use the maybe orange. Sometimes I use the red orange or cadmium orange mixed with cobalt blue. You can get a very beautiful gray color. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> different brown, you can mix different gray. For example, both of these is ultramarine blue. When I mix with raw amber, the color become more lighter, even compared the mixer ultramarine blue and the uh, and sepia. So this gray I'm going to use in this painting later, uh, in the in the demo painting later. And then you very thick color ultramarine blue. Also the same color, but the the saturation is different saturations, mixing dark. So I use very thick ultramarine blue and very thick uh, sepia, and get, I I can get the very dark color. Sometimes in Luna, I, I, when I'm using Luna Black, I, I do a, a lot of study on Luna Black. So I feel that when we use Luna Black, if you directly use Luna Black, maybe specific for the certain subject, 
if you want to use the Luna Black more naturally and looks more beautiful, to at least to me, I will mix. I will mix uh, by ultramarine or blue series family color like cerulean blue, cobalt blue, or brown series color. The Luna Black will uh, will present very good color. If you play with water up. After you mix with three color, you get the dark color like this, and then you, you just let the water flowing from top to bottom. You can see the three different color were coming up. The very good result of by mixer by mixing these three color instead of you just doing the Luna Black. And then I'm using Luna Black to make some other color. They got the uh, a very small amount of the granulation effect. For example, I use the yellow to mix with uh, uh, Luna Black. It becomes like a uh, greenish color, got a little bit granulation. And then I use uh, uh, yellow oxide and Luna Black. Raw amber and Luna Black. Okay. What paper are you using today? Uh, I'm using Pahong paper. Mainly I'm using Pahong paper and rough surface. 140 pounds are my favorite weight and surface. Right, thank you. Occasionally I use the uh, arches or sonder paper also. But it's quite expensive. I I bought in Malaysia. Okay, I'm going to start now. I like to use fresh color, uh, cream color to paint, to paint. So I spare with two pots of water. and wetting the paper. Jason? Yes. I'm, I'm interested in uh, how you pronounce uh, the name of that brush that you're using now. <laughs> the dark, dark blue. Uh, the, no, brush. The, the brush that you use the brush, it. the brush. Because there's a controversy as to how you pronounce so it. This is the Hiram brush, uh, square hair. Is, is it a AK brush or is it a AK brush? Or neither. It might be some other one. That's heron brush, squirrel. Yeah, hair. heron brush. Right. Squirrel hair. Squirrel hair. Yeah. yeah. So don't, don't, don't they consider that to be a ake or a brush? A what? A hake brush or a hake brush. Ah, uh, probably. Yes, a hake brush. Yeah.
Jason, can you tell us what colors are you using right now? Uh, cadmium yellow light hue, and then cadmium yellow dark, a deep hue. Thank you. Welcome. Now I'm missing the, I mixed the red color. Ultramarine blue. This is my favorite color. Also. Ultramarine blue. It's John's favorite color too. Oh. So we are good friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are good friends. Exactly. Now I'm using sepia, very dark color of sepia, and mixed with a little bit Luna black, very thick color, highest saturation of the color, and a little bit ultramarine. Jason, is your paper flat? Are you painting? Yeah, yeah, flat? yeah, yeah. I'm using yellow ochre or yellow oxide. Do you mix yellow ochre with yellow oxide? Yeah, and a little bit blue color. Jason. Yeah, sure. yeah, 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 it's okay. Go ahead. Um, in, in the paintings that you've shown us, I've, I've noticed that you have um, a style that looks a little bit like the images are broken up into very deliberate sections, a, a, bit, a bit like uh, cubism. Would you consider that to be part of your style? Sorry, I don't really understand the uh, question. You know, you know Picasso? Uh, he, he, oh, Picasso! He, he broke you know paintings up, didn't he, into little bits. Can, can you see that in, in... I've noticed while I've looked at your paintings that you, you seem to have a, like a, a style of breaking the picture, the narrative of the picture. I think not really. Not really. Actually, actually, I... I got inspired by the ones of the Chinese artists uh, about this style. What 
colors did you mix here, Jason? Raw amber with ultramarine and and luna black. Uh huh. Thank you. Welcome. I love those grays. Jason? Yes. yes. How long have you been painting the boat subject series? I see it's very young age, I think. Because I spray my child's wood, most of my child's wood at the seaside. I can tell you've been painting this subject for a while because I tend to see this thing with artists. Uh, the longer they paint a subject, uh, the more they enjoy painting the subject more abstract. Agree with you. You have to do familiar, you have to do very good understanding on the shape and the structure of the subject and object that you are making, you are, you are, you are repeated. Only you can do more abstract way. So in the beginning of my of, of my artwork, I used to paint more abstract way, a more realistic, realistic way. I love how you mix the color to create atmosphere as well. I like the gray color. So more study on how to mix in gray. That's why I choose a lot of the different, different, different color of brown series. Easy because I feel that brown series color, if you mix with blue or ultramarine blue, is easier to create a very, very smooth gray color. I like the way you think. Thank you. Are there lots of boats where you live? I think he's, he has answered that in um, in the Q and A, and yeah, he grew up near near the seaside. Gap. Oh, I'm so sorry. My internet was failing me earlier. I missed that. I apologize. That's okay. And I think he he grew up near the the shore, so his inspiration first inspiration comes from boat uh, seascapes. That's wonderful, wonderful color, mixture. Thank you. Are you, Sorry. have any upcoming classes online? I think he shared in his presentation his uh, calendar of classes. Maybe um, we can type it in that the chat. Later. Um, I, I will hold my questions and watch the replay. <laughs> I think he I think he mentioned that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, it was in the in the presentation. Mm -hmm.
Jason, yes, frequently asked questions. Do you paint from memory or usually with photo references? Um, reference, just a reference. Sometimes I incorporate it with the uh, imagery and uh, photo. A photo, yeah. Mm. But most of my artwork are combination from the imagination and also memory. Do you ever do clean air painting? It, Ian is asking Jason whether you do plain air or on the spot painting. Plain air, oh, I enjoy both. Mm -hmm. When I free, uh, I will I will hang out with my friends for plain air painting. But most of the, most of my creation or artwork are, uh, is carried out at my home studio. Jason? Yes. When you're doing a typical painting, is it important for you to minimize how much color, how many different colors there are in the painting? Uh, it, prop it, it properly took out with, uh, with uh, four or five colors, the primary color. Yeah. Jason, and how long do you normally, does it normally take you to finish a painting? I think the up to four to five hours for a half sheet. Well, for a full sheet, it need more time. And it depends on the how complex the painting is. Mm -hmm. So three, three hours or more for a half sheet, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a, a favorite time to paint? Usually morning, when I feel fresh after my exercises. <laughs> and sometimes I paint according to my mood, even afternoon, evening, whatever. You always paint with a flat brush? Yeah. But I use mock brush also. Depends on the subject. Sue has a question, Jason, are your brushes mostly made of natural hair or do you also have synthetic? I use both 
natural and synthetic, but I prefer to use natural hair. If I paint for the large, a large area, a big area, I like the natural hair uh, with the high water retention property. So easy for me to paint the beach area. You were mentioning earlier that you paint often in the morning after your exercises. Do yeah. you find do you find that you have a specific routine so that you can guard and carve out and make sure you have time for painting? Do you have a specific routine with that so that you have time to paint in life? Yeah. Jason, how long does it normally take you to finish a painting? That was Jason. Uh, that was John. Uh, Jason? Yeah. And me? Jason, what is your connection with boats? <laughs> We had a quick um, Q and A chat with Jason. Um, in case you wanna, you want to read um, our chat. We pasted in the chat window, chat room, the uh, transcript, and also in Facebook. I'll just type it again. I find the philosophy of art and the habit, the, the routine of art very interesting. Uh, one thing I've read is that in order for you to be very good, very skilled in one thing, you have to say no to just about everything else. Uh, Jason, do you find that's accurate in your life experience and your journey in becoming an artist? Or do you find that your philosophy is different than that? Let me have just ask that question again. Um, Jason? Yeah, okay. yeah. What is okay. your question? <laughs> Can I repeat? Are you question? a little bit more slowly? <laughs> <laughs> I did capture what the question. Thank you. My question was, I enjoy reading about philo art philosophy and routine. And one helpful idea I have read is that in order for you to be successful and skilled in one area, you need to say no to every other area. Do you find this philosophy is correct for your experience as an artist or is your philosophy different? Different. And what is that? Mm. I don't know how to answer. <laughs> but I feel that it's different because every everyone, they maybe their mindset, their, their thought is different. So even if we, we are same, same, same uh topic or same subject to paint, maybe we act, maybe we, we show the differently because we are we are, we are not totally not same. Jason, 
Yes. Following on from that question, do you like to do other mediums like oil or acrylic or, or pastel painting and things like no, that? I only like watercolor. Just watercolor, yeah. Yeah, that's watercolor. Right. Nothing wrong with that. It's a lovely medium. Now I'm adding some details. Jason, what is your connection with boats? I like boat. I like boat. I like boat. I spend my childhood uh, at the seaside, almost my my childhood life at the seaside, and then I um, play with my friend at uh, when I, I I was a kid. Okay. Uh, around the boats, I, I, I know, uh, I'm familiar with the structure and uh, all everything about boat. Great, I agree. So you paint uh, something, the, the subject that you are totally no, no idea and uh, I, it's difficult to build up the image before you paint. Especially you paint the uh, abstract work, you have to uh, uh, very a very good understanding about the structure. Only you can just uh, paint, paint, uh, painted by imagination. Otherwise, you have to re you have to follow everything from the photo reference. So, Jason. Yes. Uh, a question. Uh, if there were one thing that you've not painted yet in your life uh, oh, okay. but you'd love to paint and be there to paint it, what would that be? Maybe portrait. Say that again, sorry. Jason, may I ask a question? Yes, yeah, sure. How wet is your paper right now? Now still semi wet, but almost going to dry. I mean, almost Thank dry. You. Are you currently using thicker tube paint right now? Again? Uh, how mm -hmm. thick is how oh. thick? How is thick the is? Paint? Um, we just look. Maybe it's just like coffee, not too thick oh. and not too thin. That's a good one. <laughs> Can you imagine? You. Can you imagine that the consistency of the color just like coffee? If like tea is too thin, if like cream is too thick. Hi Jason, this is Batur. Can I ask That's Batur. Go ahead, Batur. Jason, now talking yes. about talking about the wetness of your paper, uh, 
look, we are uh, in Spain quite fond of these spray bottles. And uh, because it's quite hot here, and uh, whenever the paper starts getting wet, uh, hot, uh, dry, we kind yeah. of start spraying it. And uh, I know that in some other countries they don't they don't use these bottles. Well, yeah. I live in England and never used one of these there. And I haven't seen you actually like spraying any water or anything. Do you use spray bottles or it's not necessary? Or is I only spray use a spray like bottle to spray my color, my pigments, my my palettes. I don't like to spray use the bottles to spray on my painting. Normally, I will use the animal hair and clean water, just slightly re-wet the paper if I want the area to be wet. Okay, okay. Otherwise, I don't like to use the spray. Yeah. Even the hair dryer. But for, for the demo today, only, I only have a very short time, so I have to use the hair dryer. Sometimes when we use the hair dryer, they are over, over drying the paper. Yeah. So I cannot get the effect that I want. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, hair dryer actually dries me a lot. Uh, yeah, because I live, I live in Andalusia. It's quite hot here. So in summer, you go out for painting, and you really need one of these spray bottles because yeah, the paper dries in, in in thirty seconds. You know, so you have to keep spraying. Um, but I guess in in Malaysia, uh, the humidity is quite high. I don't know where, yeah. quite where you live. And what the temperature is? In, Mal in Malaysia, the whole year is summer day. Sorry? In Malaysia, the whole year is summer day. Very hot. Okay. And humidity? Summer all year. Is it humid? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that, I guess that helps. Well, anyway, thanks. I'm in England. Guess where I'm going to say next? <laughs> Are you okay in England? Yeah. <laughs> it's from the north of England, aren't you? Jason? Yes? When is a good time to come visit you? Go ahead. Welcome. What time of the year? Uh, sign, in July, sign, in July, sign July to September is good weather here. <laughs> Would I, uh, July and September. I think anyone Jason wants has, to Jason had to had to travel to Malaysia because Jason shared earlier that Malaysians generally cannot. But I wish to travel to US. <laughs> Jason, how close are you to the equator there in Malaysia? It's like Singapore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are neighbor country. The yeah. weather, the culture, I think it's almost the same. Watercolor <laughs> association. Okay, thank you. Even the food uh, is almost same. same. Well, Jason, I'm definitely coming over to eat your cocoa rice. So <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> Sign up for the workshop next year, which we're organizing with, with Jason. <coughs> yeah. So we have about six more minutes. And then if you would. Okay. I'm almost done. If you would post your finished work um, to Facebook and Instagram so we can all see it, that'd be fantastic. Give me five minutes, John. Yes, of course. <laughs> Five minutes, I will com uh, complete the picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jason, hi, it's me, Besnik. Yeah. What? Anything? It's me, it's me, Besnik. I just want to tell you that I really love your painting. Thank you very much. That's Besnik. Yes, sir. So why don't we give, why don't we give Jason the time to finish? Yes. Must be very yeah, grab it. Go ahead. <laughs> answer questions. So if you just hold on, that'd be great.
And then, last step. Jason, when do you use your lines or your scratch your lines? You're not going to do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Later. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> Yes. Uh, are there any artists that you gain inspiration from? I like, uh, I, I personally admire the work of Mr. Tom Wilson and Frank Rapp. Of course, uh, some of the senior artists from China, like Quan Wei Xin, mm -hmm. uh, and many more. It, it, there's almost a, a factory of uh, Chinese artists who are really, really good. It's yeah, they are very good in use of uh, water. They've had thousands of years of practice. Of course, everyone, we, we need pra practice. And then now I'm going to... I almost done. Someone were asking, is that a line brush? What you just showed? Like scratching. Yeah, scratching. No. Scratching actually is the one of the method to reserve to reserve all the uh, the white area. Stunning. The brush they were using just before he started scratching. I, I, I believe it's uh, the Chinese calligraphy brush. Yeah. The now my signature. Brushes. Now my signature books coming. <laughs> oh, your birds. <laughs> Excellent. Your follower David Ber Berger was waiting was waiting for these lines, Jason. <laughs> I believe that you I believe you noticed that almost of my painting got line. I, mm -hmm. I put the line because I think the line can increase the the visual effect or artistic sense. So, We had a question on Facebook that yeah. says, you marked with deep blue something zone. Why? It is own perception, color rule, or it is by the way. I think he's asking about color theory. In advance, well, volume handling. Yeah. Actually, this is the from the photo reference. This area actually absolutely is the blue color. And I feel that the blue color I use, the cobalt blue, is totally matching with the atmosphere of mm. this painting. And then I, 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 I get insp uh, inspiration inspired from this photo reference. So I am done. It's amazing. Good job, Jason. Thank you, Thank you Stella. Excellent. Thank Beautiful you. painting.
Excellent, Jason. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here and a, for, and a great company. Oh, thank you for so much information. Mm -hmm. Beautiful work. Thank you, Jason. Great painting. Thank Fantastic you. Fantastic presentation, Jason. Thank Answering so many questions. I, I was telling the Gormwood group earlier today before we went online, it's uh, as artists being painting and then hearing so many questions and when we get really good answers to the questions while still painting, it's, it's just phenomenal that you can all do that. So thank you so very, very much. Beautiful painting. Lisa, can we see you? Yeah. Show us your, uh, yeah. your image as well. Can we see his palette for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This is very good palette. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I got another one. More bigger. Ah. This is bigger. Mm -hmm. Uh, with that palette that has paint on it, or do you use that and keep using it, or do you clean it every painting? No, I'm not really do, to do that. Sometimes I, I will clean a certain area, maybe the mixing well, I will clean the three of these, and I will I will maintain the dark, the dark color I'm, uh, here. And then the, I think this is a very, very natural dark color to use some of the grimy well, color. i maintain this area i never to clean this area and then always keep maintain the color left on the palette left in the palette as a, a dark color it creates a good natural mix if you leave it on the palette yeah. beautiful okay well thank you really nice that was fantastic Jason, thank you so very much. And if you'd post your uh, your your final work, yeah, um, sure, I will post it by tomorrow. Okay, that'd be fantastic. So, with that, thank you, everyone. It was great to see you all today. And thank, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Good question. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. I continue to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Jason. Good night. <laughs>